For part 7 of this How to Draw Lumber series, I'm going to depart from basic boards and get into assemblies. The first assembly I want to show how to draw is floor trusses. And to do justice to floor trusses, I'm going to create a very basic foundation model so we have somewhere to park a floor truss once it's drawn. I just rotated the model around. I've been working on this one drawing all these various parts and pieces of the model. I'll turn off the sun, go into window layers, or have the layers box out it looks like. I'm going to delete the foam out of here and let's park these eye joists and saw horses. We'll remove those and we're going to view the axis just so we kind of have an orientation here. We're going to add a concrete foundation but then work with some of the materials we've already created. So let's just do a real simple rectangular foundation layout and let's make this 20 feet comma 28 feet enter. So we have a rectangle and while we're at it let's just add a bump out on here. Let's go 16 feet comma 4 feet this line out, take this line out, I'm going to triple click this outline to select the whole thing. There we go. Let's move it over and because it's everything else in our model is already groups or components we can move this piece without distorting any of the rest of the model. So I'm just going to go 100 inches here, move this over. And while I have this selected I'm just going to move and copy so we have another iteration of this. I'm just going to move up, move this up. Let's go up 40 inches with that. And make it a group while it's still selected. All right. So now we have two identical outlines, and you'll see how those work as we whip up a foundation here. I'm going to make a foundation wall for this, and let's just go make, make it 8 inches by 48. So I'm just drawing a rectangle on this post and then I'm going to just type in 48 comma 8 which is the wrong way so we're going to go 8 comma 48 enter and it puts the rectangle in the direction I wanted it in the first place. I'll triple click that, make it a group, take the move tool and uh, see if we can get it the index to the end of this line here. Jumping all over the place, so I'm just going to take it down in the blue direction and orient it to the bottom of this. And let's just move it this way. I'm doing this because it's difficult, even with inferences, sometimes to get two points to line up. I'll take a little more forceful approach to that. So let's use this for a foundation wall. Let's just draw a footing while we're at it. And because we've grouped that geometry, I can just draw on the face of that group. And then go 16, comma, 8, enter. And the order you enter these inches down here in the value control box, that's the shape the rectangle comes out. So if you go 8, comma, 16, it'll make it stand up, or 16, comma, 8, it'll make it lay down. And move this, taking it by the center point. And made a mistake there because this is free geometry attached to the free geometry of that line. And so when I move the rectangle, it moves the line. So while it's selected here, I'm just going to right click and make it a group. And now we can move it independent of the line. Little trick, and that can be really frustrating if you're not, uh, you don't know what's going on in the model, why things jump around and change. And just to clarify, we have a group here with this rectangle. And another group with this tall rectangle and then this, these lines are individual lines that aren't in a group so I have to triple click to select all of them. All right. As long as we're at it let's make this look a little more official with the keyway in it. I'm in the foundation group I'm just going to draw a box that's let's call it 2.5 comma 1.5 which is something we could cut out of a 2x4 or make two of them out of a 2x6. We take the protractor tool, just go in here. We're still in group edit mode. 
I'm just going to put a 15 degree angle on these two sides. And then with the move tool, I'll grab this corner and just slide it in so that these lines match up. And we can select this. And because this little item isn't hooked to anything, I can move it around freely. If I, for instance, if I drop it here on the edge and then go to move it again, it does all these goofy things. So I'm going to back it up. And as long as I can put it where I want it in one move without dropping it somewhere I don't want it, I don't have to group it to move it. I can just move it in one sweep there. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to take out this little line. And the line that's still showing here, I just erased the line, but that's in this foundation wall group. The one that remains is in the footing group. So it's, it's separate and you get Z flashing here because there's two faces. So I'm going to go in here. Now we're in the footing group and I'm just going to trace the outline of our keyway. And you can hardly see what's happening because the lines lay on top of each other. But I've just traced lines in the wall group within the footing group. So when I re erase that now there's, there's only one face that occupies that keyway space. So we have a, a footing group and a wall group. Let's get rid of these guidelines while we're at it. Okay, so that gives us the geometry we want for a footing in a wall. And do the wall first. So what I need to do is explode this group. Click it once, right click, explode this group. Now this is free geometry as well as the lines. So if I triple click the foundation wall, it selects the wall and all the lines. Now we'll hold down shift and draw a box around this foundation part here. And you can see it deletes that part of the selection from what we had going on. So with the line selected as a path, I'll take the follow me tool and click the foundation. And that gives us instantly a foundation wall. And I'm gonna triple click it and reverse the faces just cause I like the way that looks. All right, and now we need to get the footing to follow the same path. And that's why I created this extra line up here. So let's take our footing group and grab it by this corner and move it up to here. All right, so now the footing group is attached to a free line. So I'm going to right click and explode the footing and just go through the same steps again. I'm going to triple click this to select the line and you can see what's happening there. I, I forgot that I had made this line a group. So we got to explode that one also. There we go. Now we have free geometry. So if we triple click the footing, it selects the line with it. Hold down shift to deselect the footing. Follow me tool. There we go. So we have a footing that matches our foundation reverse the faces. And you can see here this line that still shows up. That's because there was a point of geometry on here in the follow me line. We left that line on there. If that's a problem, you have to go through and delete it. But it's not a problem for us here. But we do need to make this whole footing a group. So make a group. And we're just going to move it down, straight down it fits under the foundation wall. While we're at it, let's go in and make this look like a foundation with some materials. Go in here and we want asphalt and concrete. And then this concrete form 4x8, which is just an awesome texture. And then we want to do a little bit with this. Just going to take this concrete aggregate and paint these faces. And then let's take the footing part, selecting the whole thing with a triple click, and just put this concrete face material on there. So, with those steps, we've thrown together a really basic foundation for our purposes here. I think I'll do one more thing. That's going to be to draw a line here. Oops, I got to get into the foundation wall group. Okay, we're in that. And 
actually the foundation wall is not a group so we're going to make it one right now and you can see it adds this extra box around so you know it's a group now we want to go into into this group and let's draw an eight inch line here and we're going to select that line move and copy it with the control key and we're just going to slide it in the green direction until it sits on the foundation wall over there then let's raise this up 18 inches. And that way we can show an example of how to draw a top cord bearing floor truss and a bottom cord bearing floor truss. So there we have a really basic foundation where we can park some floor trusses, which I'll cover in a minute. With this foundation drawn, I'm going to add some treated wood top or sill plates on it. And for those of you that uh, have a good idea of how to work with various pieces of lumber, etc., you can just fast forward through this section, but what I'm going to do is take some of the existing geometry here, make a, a plate, and then stick it around on the top of this foundation. So I'm just going to grab one of these with a control C. That's a 2x4, which is pasted in place. Now we can move this over to the foundation. Just stick it on the outside here. And I'm double clicking, or I want to get into the entity info, and that's a group, so I don't have to worry about uh, messing with a component anywhere else. This is already three and a half inches wide, so to make a two by six, I'm just going to pull us out two more inches with the two enter. As long as I'm at it, I'm just going to stretch it down here, make it hit that foundation wall. And the other thing I want to do here is change the look of that if we're going to call it a green treated plate. Let's make it look green and treated. If I modify this piece and that color, then it'll change the color on everything else. So let's see if this wood plywood knots will do that. It's not too bad. I'm going to make sure that I'm not affecting the wood plywood knots everywhere else, but let's take this, right click, go to texture, position, find the green handle, turn it 90 degrees. I'm just going to kind of shrink this down like that. That's almost green enough, but I'm going to green it up a little bit more here. Get some real real treated lumber looking stuff here. And let's go with that. Double click this face, move a copy of it. With the control. And let's rotate it up. Let's rotate it down 35 degrees. Right click that and then call this a projective texture. And triple click this piece, select, take the eyedropper, grab this and paint it on our board. Make sure that's how we want it to look. Delete that. And I'm going to go and make sure we didn't change the color of the other plywood because we've kind of used that similar texture. But it looks like we're good. And that's a little too green, so I'm just going to. That's how it's going to be. So now that we have one of these boards, it's just a group, and we're not going to make a bunch of them, so I won't take the time to make it into a component. I'm just going to slide one of these over here. Let's take this one, move and copy it, move and copy it again. Go over here. Both of those, move and copy them. Do 
something a little bit different here. Just going to draw a line. Let's go underneath here and draw a line under this. And I drew that line outside of the group, so it's not going to do me any good. I got to get into the group before I can do this. And I'll change my mind and just use the board stretcher, which is shrinking in this case. Same thing with this one. All right, then we're going to take the outside of that group and then take this and this. And then let's rotate and copy that. In the blue direction there. Turn it 90 degrees while they're selected. I'm just going to move that down here. And I didn't grab the point I should have, but that's simple enough. I'll just re drop it there and re grab it here. And then let's pull this down. Okay, so we have a perimeter plate. We better copy one of these and get this last little tidbit that we need to get done here. Grab it by this handle this time. You can see that tool kind of jitters around because it has the capability of either moving or rotating that tool, um, that board. So we just want to make sure we're in the move mode because that's what we're after. Somewhere down the line it's probably going to matter. So I'm going to select these plates then we'll just make them a group in themselves so we can deal with them like that. While they're all selected, I'm right click clicking to make a group. So that was covering some of the details we've done with other pieces of lumber. For those of you that skipped that part, we'll now get into the part where we draw a floor truss. And to draw a floor truss, open web type. Uh, I'm just going to use, they're basically made out of two by four. So we'll go back in here again, grab a group with a control C, edit, paste in place. Now I'll move this piece. And we're going to make a, this the standard bottom bearing floor truss out of this. So I've placed that two by four going to rotate him 90 degrees. I could have saved myself a step if I had rotated it from a different corner. We'll just position it over here. And that's a group. So I'm double clicking to get into it. Let's just pull this out to the end of our plate. And then I'm going to move it back an inch. One enter. Get out of the group. And I'm just going to slide it this way. half an inch so that we can put sheeting on the end of it. And again here the way these floor trusses and silt plates and everything work, there's all sorts of methods and assembly procedures. So I'm just kind of picking a standard random one, which reminds me that I should move these in a half an inch to match and so here's here's the first example of why it's good to have these sill plates in a group of their own. We'll move these plates later. Okay so here we have a, a 2x4 group that spans. Of course we all know 2x4s don't come that long and are not that strong. I'm just going to show how to do the 2x4 members here and not get into the truss plate so much. So I've double clicked into this group and now while inside of it I'm going to triple click and make a group out of the parts within this group. So what I want to do is take this group and we're going to move it up with a control. I'm getting it in the blue direction and I want it to be on the top of this plate plus an inch and a half. 
So I, I index to the top of the plate and drop it, and then I moved it up another inch and a half. So this floor truss will be a matching height to our top cord bearing ones that we'll do later. So let's see, let's do another paste in place. I still think we still have that in memory. Okay, we do. Let's grab this piece. You always got to make sure that you haven't picked up a component inadvertently because you'll be over here working on this piece you think you copied and lo and behold you're changing everything else in your model and that can be frustrating. So I'm just taking this group and manipulating it around to where we want it and then I'm going to double click into it. And you can tell we double clicked into it because the faces get polka dots on them. Just raise this up. I'm just making one of the members with the wrong face there. So I use the back button. I'm going to move this here. And I'll just slide this in an inch and a half. And you can see I'm inside the group and I went to grab that. And all I was holding onto was one corner, so it just distorted the 2 by 4 So we'll use the back button and click out of the group and move the whole 2 by 4 by itself. And the way a floor truss is set up, there's a system of um, studs and webs that go through. Those are all structurally computed with software at the truss plant, but this is just showing modeling techniques, so I'm just going to make it look good and leave the structural part to the engineers when it's important. And we want to space these out. I could do a lot of things. I could go in and, and use a line and divide up this space. But now that we have this end block made, I'm going to space blocks out across this floor truss. And the simplest way to do this is with the move and control. So we're moving a copy. Once we park it at the end here, instead of using the X command, we'll use the slash command. So after I Park it at the end and hit enter to set that distance. Then just hit slash five enter. And it puts four more of these in that space. If I would hit slash nine enter, whatever number you hit and hit enter, it, it spaces them all equal. So the distance between all these blocks is identical. So let's go with that. For spacing that seems like pretty typical for what a floor truss would have so now we have we're still inside a floor truss group and we have all these separate groups in here none of those are components because we don't really need to do much in the way of changing them and so now let's put a web in let's take the move tool I'm gonna grab this two by four by its center point I'm just gonna hit control I'm just gonna move it over to the center all right, and that's a group, so we can click into it. Take the board stretcher here, just dive into this geometry and stretch this out a random distance. And I've clicked once to get out of it, out of that group edit. Now we have this two by four group standing up. So I'm gonna take the rotate tool and now carefully get on this center point, click on the center line, and then drop this down, and then index to the center point of this block. We have this 2x4 group laying in there on the diagonal, much like floor trusses are done. So when we click to enter this 2x4 group, I'm just going to trace the lines and see the little X's to show me where I'm, how I'm tracing something that's in another group. I'm just going to click through these points. And we can take the push-pull tool, just cut these pieces of wood off drag them back to the other side with a double click here. We've moved all that stuff back three and a half inches and we have this board two by four that fits perfectly in between the uprights of this floor truss. You can see if I move this out here, it's all cut nice and we save the material projected texture so that it just looks very much like a board in a floor truss with rock. So let's go back to put that in place. Now that we've got this two by four web drawn, let's duplicate it out across the floor truss. 
I'm just going to grab the rotate tool, hit the control key, get this indexed in the blue direction and hold down shift to keep it there. Get right on this point of this block. So I'm going to rotate a copy of it 180 degrees. And you can see down here in the value control box, I got 181.6. So I'm going to override that with a 180 enter so that it goes where it belongs. Now let's take the move tool and put this in position over here. So now, because the spacing is equal and the blocks are equal, we can just select two of these, move with a control, Grab it carefully by this point and move it till it fits here. Hit enter, 2x enter, and we've completed the floor truss. So that's pretty much all there is to that. We could explode this group and then right click and make it a component. So we'll have a, a bottom bearing floor truss component and inside that component if we double click in you can see by watching the entity box there's all these groups but now they're inside of a component so if we change one of these trusses they'll all change so we've got one of these move it and control it I'm just going to slide it over 24 inches enter and then let's just go 6x enter and see how we did yeah, that's about right Spacing is going to be a little bit off for layout of. So let's just delete this guy and we'll put a top cord bearing truss there. So with those steps, you can get a great representation of a floor truss. Although, as I qualified earlier, this isn't a structurally engineered design by any means. And it does, however, show the idea of what kind of space a floor truss can take up. So I'll stop the video here, and for those that are interested, I'll do one more segment to this tutorial and show how to convert one of these into a top cord bearing truss for the other part of this foundation. continue this tutorial about drawing foundations and floor trusses, we'll move into creating a top cord bearing floor truss using one of these bottom cord bearing trusses uh, for material. In the meantime, I need to do a little housekeeping. I added some gravel down here and changed the position of the form texture on the outside of the foundation wall. But in the previous segments and move these plates for these bottom cord bearing trusses in a half inch and neglected to do that on these upper plates and I want to put that in this tutorial segment just to show you that it's not that tough to go back through your model and make some changes when you've built it with some forethought in this case putting these various things into groups. So I'm going to turn the shadows off and then go into this sill plate group and move these things in a half an inch so that they match up with the construction from before. And it's important to, while you're moving these pieces, to pay attention to the axis that they're moving on so that you don't slip up and have them off by some direction. If I move this like that, it looks like it's a half inch, but I've actually moved it a different distance it might not clip back into the same plane so just move your move things accurately and purposefully when you're doing so and save yourself some trouble later just selecting these various groups and moving them with the move tool zooming in for accuracy piece went somewhere weird. Just going to grab this corner. There we go. And noticing in the value control box that I got a half inch out of that move. Now I'll just go back in and use the push-pull tool and shorten these the half inch so that they all 
match up like they should have in the first place. It's always better to catch these things in the beginning, save yourself a little bit of trouble, but it's not like starting all over. You've got a lot of gone a long way to uh, making a functional model by grouping things and all that. So I'm just going in here one group at a time, take the push-pull tool, and it'll remember the half inch push from the previous piece. So let me just select that, just need to go in here. And I think that that should be it. So with that little bit of housekeeping, we now have plates for this top cord bearing floor truss to lay on. So I'm going to just take one of these components with a move and a control. I'm just going to move this over 120. And let's go 14 feet instead. So now we got it over here where we can work on it. And I must have not moved it carefully in the direction. So it, it went down as well as over. So I'm going to back that up, move it again, and make sure that I'm paying attention to getting it into the green axis. And that time I neglected to press control. Okay, there we go. Green axis, one piece, making a copy. Let's go 14 feet, enter. There we go. Which is what I was trying to do in the first place. And we want to work on this truss, but this foundation wall here is kind of in the way of viewing what we want. So I'm going to take the section tool and just plaster it on this side. And then for whatever reason, you can't select this with a left click of the mouse. So I just drag a box to get that selected when it's blue. It's the functional geometry and you can just move it. So I'm just going to slide it over here a random distance and then we'll go in and turn off that plane. You can, you can turn it back on. That's the piece you're hiding. That's the plane that's hiding it. This way we get a nice clear shot of this truss. And we moved it as a component when we Click that, it's a component, there's seven in the model. So we don't want to change this component. I'm going to right click it and explode it. And now it's 15 solid groups. So I'll just, actually while those are selected, which I dropped the selection. So I'm just going to right click in here, make it a component. And this time it's going to be a top cord. Now we're working with a new entity. So let's just go in here. Now these are still groups inside of the component. So I can just change these and not affect other parts of the model. I'm just going to pull this out, index it on the outside of this plate, which is fine. So I'm going to delete this. Move a copy of this down. I'm going to select this. So if we come in seven and a half inches, will be equal to the inside of the foundation. So I'm going to just move this in nine and a half inches. I should be able to get in here and grab the end of that board. It's going to be a little tough with the push-pull tool. So I just selected the end and moving it into the green direction, 9.5. Enter. That gives us a two-inch space to the wall. Do the same thing on this end. I'm just using this other guideline to pull this in. And there I, I slipped off the green axis, so it twisted the board. So I'm just going to use the back arrow key and do that again. just want to stay on one of these lines. There we go. It's going in the green direction, 9.5. Enter. That gives us a good bottom cord. And we're going to get rid of all these except one, so we have something to work with. So I got that top cord in there too, which I did not want to do. And there we go. So let's just delete all those. Take our one last guinea pig here. I'm going to slide this guy out to the end, and then move it in. 36 inches. And I'm going to copy it this way. Actually, to make this spacing thing work out, I'm going to put a guideline in here 
from the end of this top cord. It's going to come in 36 inches, which is the same we moved the other side. And now we can use our spacing and replication feature with a move and a control. I'm just going to take one of these blocks, grabbing it by the corner that's going to end up three feet away from the end of the plate. So hit enter to set that distance and then let's go slash five to get our evenly spaced blocks. It's all very simple. We need to double up this top plate so I'm just going to take, oops, I'll click and I'll take this plate, move and copy it down an inch and a half. We go into this, just draw a little line here, like that. Same thing on this end. Take the push pull tool and we'll just evaporate this middle section. And one of my lines didn't take. Let's see if I can figure out what happened. That should be. Oh, I know, I pushed it the wrong way. So we're going to push it from the edge here. That's where I drew the lines. And erase that. Make sure those blocks stayed in there. Yep, and we have two blocks and they're in the same group and that's okay. So just kind of building up this, this truss. We're going to make our webs again, so let's just take one of these. And first thing we'll do is going to move it over from the center point. Except I forgot to hit control. So I used the back button to put it where it was. Now I take control and move a copy it over here three quarters of an inch and now we'll rotate it by grabbing it on the center point and the center line and then indexing that center line with this notch here and we can just take go into group edit mode let's just pull this out random distance same thing on this end just pull it down a random distance now we'll do our little trimming and anybody that watched the bottom cord bearing truss segment knows where we're going with this thing. Oops. Need to go on the back side. There we go. A couple quick lines. And if you've ever been to a floor truss manufacturing plant, it's pretty fascinating to watch the saws they use for making all these cuts. They make them in an instant and they're very, very accurate. Okay, so let's go out of group edit mode since we have our piece. Take the rotate tool and copy with the control. Blue direction on this corner. Moving a copy around. Move a copy over. And we'll move the copy over this way. Move and control those. And the floor truss designers in the audience are going to have fits with the way this is designed because I'm sure it's just about as structurally inappropriate as can be. But we'll focus on the methods here more than the structural part of it. And because I got an odd number of spaces here, it doesn't lay out like our bottom cord bearing one. So let's just get this done. So I'm inside the truss component group, I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. Make it a group. And we can work with this. And we want a guideline in the middle of it. See an index to there. So there's a component. We have this get in there. We've got various groups inside here. And this blue square here, or blue rectangle, is just going to serve as a canvas to make these parts on it. So I'm going to take this vertical block and first I need to move a copy of it. Three quarters of an inch. And let's just rotate it down. I'm going to take the center right to this intersection.
edit this group. Pull it up however much we want. Oh, we're still in edit mode. We're just going to trim this off like we've done before. That. Let's trim the top to our center line. We have one side, so we can get rid of our canvas group, we can get rid of our guideline, take this block and rotate it. Make sure we're in the blue direction here and on this point. Hit control, so we'll rotate a copy of it. That in place. It looks like it's stuck where I wanted it to. Yep, that's all good geometry there. Okay, so then we've got one more piece to make. And again, the roof truss engineers will probably be having fits about my method or my layout of these members. But the point I hope I'm communicating here is how to model and draw the various pieces that are involved in floor trusses and ways to shape the parts and duplicate them quickly so you can be as accurate as you want with your modeling. You can even go to the extent of getting the engineered drawings of a floor truss and then duplicating all the parts that are actually structurally viable and model those if you care to. But in doing that, you'll end up using many of these methods. So we have this end piece, and we're just going to move a copy of that down here. I'm going to set it on this back corner. Line that up. See the angles are different here. So we created them separately rather than beginning. Oops, and there I... 186.4. I did not want that. I want 180. Enter. And then I noticed that this little segment down here didn't get cut off previously. So let's go ahead and trim that up. In my haste, I missed that little detail. And because that's a group and not a component, that means I need to go back and do that to this one. If you're doing a lot of these, those could be made a component, and then when you change one, they all change. So that's basically what I wanted to end up with. And here is this guideline, which is inside the group. So we can go back and put that back in place. Now let's take our component and just move it over here 12 feet. Puts it on the end. You can see we got a problem down here. We'll fix that in a minute. Let's just go ahead and copy these. Now we're going with move and a control. 24, enter. Oops, 5x, enter. Let's go 7x, enter. And that gets them down close enough to the wall. So let's fix this. Now I could go in and make a custom truss, which is probably what would happen in the real world. But I want to show how simple it is to modify models once you're kind of deep in the process. So we're just going to go into this foundation and I'm going to select all this geometry right here. I'm just zooming in until I get exactly what I want. I'm just going to take the move tool and move this over. Let's go 12 inches. 
So there it is. Remove that part. It just moves everything. And now we know what the distance was. So we just go into the footing model or the footing group. I'm sorry. Gonna move this 12 inches. Very simple. If we go into that 10 tons of gravel, and this uh, it was 12 tons of gravel. My back says it was 150. So I'm just going to move him over. That's a foot. And we've got to go into the plate group. We're going to extend this out a foot. Let's see, we're in that mold again. Just cut out. I'm just looking for this single dotted line that tells me I'm in that group or component edit mode. So I'm just pull this out 12. And then I think the last thing I got to do is move this little guy 12 inches in the green direction. So I hope that that gives an idea of how these various things work and some of the methods you can use for minimizing the drawing time and create fairly realistic looking models and take these to any extent that you're after depending on your design purpose. So there you have it. Uh, for those of you that stuck through all the segments of this video, congratulations. I hope it's been felt helpful and helps you create realistic models for the projects you're working on. Thanks for watching.